Hello and welcome to another episode of Sound Ominous. I'm Ominous and today I'm Ominous. Uh, today we will review the or review react to the top 10. What do I keep saying that? Yeah, because it's a majority thing, but today I will react to the 100 best albums of the 90s by Rolling Stone. Um, the cover art is, yeah, just the cover of this particular list is Nas's Illmatic, uh, classic, classic uh, hip hop album. From Moby to Nirvana, the records that define the decade. Um, PJ Harvey, Rid of Me. Moby with Everything is Wrong. Uh, kind of an edgy edge lord, you know, uh, <laughs> fucking uh, bite on my tongue there. Kind of an edgy edge lord that uh, is an electronic, I do like him, but he's kind of edgy, you know. Uh, in a way, but he makes good music, I suppose. Uh, Green Day's Dookie, classic of course. Uh, TLC's Crazy is actually cool, not a big fan of TLC. And Bjork with, it doesn't have an album title because she is artsy and she is, ooh, not mainstream. So I have no idea how that record is called. It's, you know, if you give me a title, I would know it, but I don't listen to enough Bjork to, you know, to call it. But I do like her, so there we go. Number 100 is uh, Moby with Everything Wrong, the, the cover art. Um, I would say good album. I do want to get into Moby because he does sound like an interesting artist. So definitely request him if you like Moby or if you want to see me react to him. So there we go. Uh, yeah, by the way, if you're new to this, um, I will talk about the album if I love it, if I hate it. Uh, if I'm in the middle, I'm just going to name the number, the title and all that and I will move on. The artist and stuff like that. Number 99, uh, Penta Baluna. Uh, you know, not to waste, uh, because I can only make the video 32 minutes long, so I cannot waste too much time. Otherwise the, otherwise the video will split and that is fucking annoying. Number 98 is Buena Vista Social Club, self-titled. Number 97 is 69 Love Songs by the Magne Magnetic Fields, don't know it, but I do like the title if you know what I mean. Number 96 is Ambient Works Volume 2 by Ava Twins, or Selected Ambient Works Volume 2. Um, yeah, I believe this is like the, the like one of the most acclaimed electronic albums or something. It doesn't have the iconic white uh, cover, so it's probably not the it's probably not that one that I'm hinting at. It's probably their follow-up album. I have no clue, but I do really like Avex Twin. Avex Twin from what I've heard so far. I should definitely request some Avex Twin because I do love some electronic acts. Uh, you know like Death Punk, like De Death Mouse, uh, Craftwork Classic of course so you know I do like that stuff so I do request it if you if you're interested. Number 95 is MTV Unplugged in New York by Nirvana, good uh, Unplugged version. Uh, yeah, arguably the greatest of all time, not my, not my personal favorite because uh, it's kind of over bloated and all that and over Kurt Cobain's downward spiral Rolling Stone's 1994 feature. Uh, I, I mean Rolling Stone of course has to cover, has to cover Kurt Cobain in every, every sense of the word. That, that's probably why I kind of despise it because it's overplayed, it's kind of overdone, but I do like the show in general. It's a good unplugged performance, but if I never have to hear it again, I wouldn't mind. And it's not really an album, so it's kind of questionable for the list. But you can put it on there, I don't mind it. Uh, number 94 is Mermaid Avenue by Billy Bragg and Wilco. Number 93 is Moon Safari by Air. Number 92 is The Soft Bulletin by The Flaming Lips. Uh, I've heard of this band. They did some collaboration with some terrible pop art because they probably want some relevancy. Uh, but they but they have some acclaimed albums, I believe. So you can request them if you want. They are a uh, you know a popular band in a sense. So I do they do spark my interest in a way. I don't know what they're exactly doing, but they have an interesting uh, let's say an interesting development deal. If you can call it that, you know, if you have seen their collaboration with a lot of terrible artists, but. It is interesting to say the least. Number 91 is Bossa Nova by the Pixies. Uh, never really a big fan of the Pixies. Uh, this is, I believe, their kind of their disappointing or their kind of building off record after Server Rosa and Doolittle, which were like acclaimed albums. And Bossa Nova was still good, but it was like a weaker album in their discography, I believe. 
you know, not as weak as the latest two, but uh, but definitely not as strong as those. Number ninety, number nine, ninety, uh, one in a million by uh, Alaya. Oh man, that title that uh, brings back some good memories, if you know what I mean. Number eighty nine is Into the Great Wide Open by Tom Petty. Number eighty eight is R. Kelly by R. Kelly. What the fuck is this doing on there? I didn't even know that that this asshole made music back then, but uh, there, there you go. Nineteen ninety eight. Yeah, I suppose. Who, who gives a shit? Number eighty seven is De La Soul's Dead by De La Soul. Number nine or ninety seven, eighty seven. Number eighty six is I Can Hear the Heart Beating as One by Yo La Tango. It's a dumbass name. Uh, number 85 is one of my personal favorite, Different Class by Bilbo. I'm really happy to see this on there. Uh, this is of course a, uh, a Brit pop masterpiece in a way. So Away and Blur are probably going to make the cut too, because they did throw Bilbo on there. And maybe even Sway, The Verve, you know. Uh, I have a very soft spot for Brit pop. I do love the genre. Uh, this is a very special album. Uh, you know, I do love the cover too, where some uh, mares is going down and the band is standing there like there's some ghosts or something they're painted grey you know li li like their ancestors or something I, I really love the dark uh, art the really artsy style that different class has you know even if you look at a music video like Disco 2000 they're also in that same style I really love that you know they look like ghosts or something they look really cool I think it's kind of like a personal thing to me um, I, you know, I really love Pulp. I think the name itself is also really cool. It reminds me also of Pulp Fiction, of course, but it's just an awesome band, I think. Uh, this artist is growing on me, 84. Antichrist Superstar with Marilyn Manson. Um, I did used to hate him a lot because he's kind of like an image whore and all that. People like to criticize him. And I, I, I do criticize him for, you know, being a kind of an attention whore and kind of, um, you know, kind of being him and stuff like that but uh you know even what what's my uh, rolling stone you know because they're both shit but, uh but uh, even rolling stone uh you know mentions that it has a first class trent Reznor production and i believe uh yeah maybe trent Reznor produced this so that's probably why i don't despise this record it is a good record but i that it, you know marilyn Manson is definitely a hit or miss artist for me he is he has some good songs under his belt, he has some good albums even, but uh, definitely kind of an iffy artist for me. You know, definitely give me some Nine Inch Nails, if you know what I mean. But still a good album, still a good album. I, I cannot uh, discredit Mary Manson for that. Number 83 is title, Fiona Apple, I've heard of her, but uh, not anything special for me. Uh, speaking of not anything special for me, well, it's reverse day for me. <laughs> well, not really, but uh, this is, you know, just joking. This is a very special record for me, this one, uh, 82. Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. Fucking hell. Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness by the Smashing Pumpkins. Of course, I'm on a huge Pumpkins uh, kick. You know, not a as much anymore, but I still want to get in. Well, I am into them. You know, I do love the band, but um, I've primarily listened to their singles a lot and not a lot of their studio work. So if you want to request some Pumpkins, I'm definitely up for that. They're definitely like one of my favorite bands at the moment. Uh, all time already for, uh, for sure for me. Uh, yeah, so definitely uh, request them. I love this record. Uh, Tonight's Night is on there. Lovely song. Um, 1979, of course. The Biggest Hit by Pumpkins. Uh, Zero. I really love this. Like a personal favorite of mine. Through the Eyes of Ruby is a great song. It's like a seven minute epic or something. I love that song. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff on there. Uh, I'm forgetting one single. Of course, but with Bullet with Butterfly Wings, which is arguably the best title song, and arguably The Smashing Pumpkins is one of the best named bands, in my opinion, together with Pulp and Nine Inch Nails, just great, great fucking titles. Uh, you know, the, the Nines just produce so many great artists, like I just named, and they also talk about Pearl Jam and stuff like that. A lot of Pearl Jam too. Ten, of course, uh, they mentioned Nirvana too, they're a decent act, they're really overrated, but they're, you know, they're still good. But in my opinion, not as good as the Pumpkins and the Pearl and Pearl Jam. Those are great acts. Nirvana is decent. They're decent for what they are. They're, they're way too fucking mediocre and repetitive for me. But they're still a good act. Um, you know, they killed hair metal, so I'm happy for that. So there we go. 
Uh, 81 is Pose by Björk, yeah, that was the cover art. Uh, good cover art, I believe she's like 40 years old. I, I thought she was 30 or something or 20, but she's like 40, 50 years old. Devlin doesn't look like that. She probably wears some makeup or something or a shitload of that. Uh, she's an interesting artist. I did say in a few videos of mine, uh, request her because I do like her. So there we go. I haven't really listened to any Björk song, but if you do want me to listen to it, then there you go. Number 80 is Lash Plex by The Breeders. Number 79 is B1000 by God by Voice. Voices. It looks kind of like, well, I'm not gonna say that because it is offensive, so there we go. Number 78 is definitely Maybe by Oasis. Uh, of course, a classic debut album by a great band. The Gallagher Brothers are, you know, they're, they're just don't give a fuck, funny, funny guys. Sometimes they take away from the music itself, you know, because their uh, their conversations are sometimes, they sometimes overshadow their own music, which is kind of ironic, I think. Uh, but I do love the band and their debut album, although I prefer Morning Glory and we will probably see that uh, that album a bit later on this list. But definitely, ba definitely maybe is definitely a, uh, a, an important miles, milestone for the Britpop movement. Brit Britpop movement and they, you know, they pretty much created Britpop with this album, so there we go. They, well, not per, not, not per se created it, I would give it to Suede or Blur. Uh, or Stone Rose for that matter, but uh, you know, always the biggest influence. But I would definitely say it popularized it together with the Stone Roses for sure. Great album. Number 77 is uh, Rex Glory by Neil Young and Crazy Horse. I haven't heard any Neil Young song for that matter, but I do like the, the title Rex Glory. Number 76 is Bridges to Babylon by the Rolling Stones. Are you fucking kidding me? This is like one of the worst things ever. This is like one of the worst Rolling Stones albums ever, and it is on there. Like, the fuck Rolling Stone. Um, I'm not gonna look up a rating because I don't have enough time for that, but uh, it's definitely a head scratcher for me. Like, what the fuck? Uh, number 75, if you're, if you're feeling sinister by Bella and Sebastian. Um, I've recently looked at a video about this band, and they look really fit. They have like a really fit, cute girl in their band, or that's uh, at least from the music video. They look fit as fuck, or that girl at least. Make good music, they kind of make like indie indie pop rock music. It sounds good, it sounds kind of like pretentious, hipster-ish, but it does sound good, so. I definitely want to get into this band if it is requested, so there we go, they're a good band. Number 74 is The Battle of Los Angeles by Rage Against the Machine. Uh, so this means that uh, arguably Evil Empire and uh, the self-title will make it to definitely the self-title. Maybe Evil Empire, which is which is becoming a personal favorite of mine. I really love that record. But uh, overall, the whole race discography is awesome. This record, you know, it is awesome too. It is the last official studio album by this band. You know, they did release Renegades and a live album, which I really love. You know, I pretty much love this whole band. So there we go. That's awesome. So just everything that it did is really great. Uh, and Battle of Los Angeles, you know, is arguably the most uh, progressive album of the band since Tom Morello just goes crazy on this record, so definitely check it out if you haven't already. Now we have 73 with a dumbass style, Super Dupa Fly by Missy Misdemeanor Elliot, and I mean that whole title is just fucking dumb, so I'm not even gonna talk about that. Oh, it's just a dumb title, are you gonna ignore the whole album because of that? Yup. Number 72 is Dick Your Own Hole by the Chemical Brothers. Definitely want to get into the Chemical Brothers a bit more because uh, Electronic Acts. You know, I do really love some Electronic Acts, so there we go. So if you want to request it, then, you know, go right ahead. And speaking of Electronic Acts, 71 ends producing with DJ Shadow. I believe his debut album and pretty much his, uh, his biggest album ever. Uh, pretty great, important album. I've, I've yet to listen to it, but I'm calling it great, so there we go. But definitely request it because I'm interested in it, and there you go. Number 70 is Max and Quay by Tricky. Number 69 is The Carnival by Wyclef Jean. Number 60 is Out of Time by R.E.M. Just fucking terrible. I believe the Losing My Religion is on here. Low country feedback. Or, yeah, I don't fucking know. That's what they're, that's what they're saying. Near Wild Heaven. Uh, me in Honey. In Honey. What the fuck? Just bad, just bad. Uh, number 67 is August and Everything After by Counting Crows. Number 66 is Life After Death by the Notorious B.I.G. I believe this is not officially an album by him, but uh, you know, it's just, it is a posthumous record. 
it has some good songs on it. I, you know, I don't think that Big is like one of the greatest rappers ever. He has good flow, but you know, he is right. Well, you can put him on the list. I don't mind. I don't mind him. Now we have 65 with Baduism by uh, Erica Badu. I've heard of the name, but it doesn't really say much to me. Uh, then we have the One Hit Wonder. I do not want what I haven't got by Sinead O'Connor, which you know. Um, it's 1997 for some reason, so that's maybe when she broke out or maybe when the record was released. And I believe she had like one or two records and then uh, she opened her mouth and she destroyed her whole career and she, she just ruins her career. Stupid bitch, there we go. 63 is my life and marriage oblige. Number 62 is only built for Cuban links by Raekwon and I believe this is a Wu-Tang Clan uh, side project or something. Uh, you can request it. Although I didn't really accept the the 36 Chambers thing because I'm just not really interested into reviewing rap music. It's kind of iffy for me, but if you do want to review it and, or if you do want to request it, there you go. Number uh, number 61, I want to say number U2. <laughs> number 61 is Europa by U2. I do think it's a good cover, a good title. It is an interesting record. It's definitely weaker than Achtung Baby, which will pretty much be number one on this list because, I mean, it's fucking Roller Stone, come on now. It's a good album, it's a bit too vague for me, but uh, still good, and I mean by you too, so of course Rolling Stones is going to put it on there. Number 60 is Funky Divas by En Vogue. Number 59 is Cypress Hill by Cypress Hill. Number 58 is Jenna by Jenna Jackson, which is... No, no, I believe she was on the age of this too, so it's not, it's not a debut. Number 57 is Violator by Depeche Mode, definitely uh, a great record by the band, you know, um, Crowning Glory of the Boys, it sounds like a good title. Or oh, no, no, it's, that is a description of Rolling Stone, fucking old dumbass. Um, Swedish Perfection, Halo, World in My Eyes are on there. They're not mentioning... Um, how is that fucking song called again? You know, where there's a king that uh, is sitting like in his throne. Uh, all I ever won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, enjoy the silence is a good one. That's on this record, I believe. So it's definitely a classic album for that matter. Uh, I am kind of pissed that this record beat out Rust in Peace in uh, in the Watch Mojo vid, but uh, I mean that's Watch Mojo. And Rolling Stones probably not even gonna put Rust in Peace on there because they're fucking retarded. So we go. You know, they are gonna put uh, this record, which I don't mind, and they are gonna put uh, Mama Said Knock You Out on there by L Cool J. I honestly kind of despise El Cool J for what he has become. He, he's just a very bad, um, you know, just a really bad rapper. This was really his last, uh, you know, uh, relevant record, I would say. And then he just went to shit. He still has some crooners here and there, but overall he's kind of a bad artist. You know, it's a good album by a bad artist. That, that is how I would describe it. Ritual, Ritual De La Habitual by James Addiction, which is a dumbass title, 55, and a really pervy album cover. And I believe they have also one with uh, two bitches sitting on like a chair with big tits and their hair on fire or something. I believe they have a cover like that too. And of course, they're gonna have more uh, Bruce Springsteen on there. 50, 54, The Ghost of Tom Joe with Bruce Springsteen. I just do not care for this guy, honestly, but yeah, there we go. Number 53 is Bone Machine by Tom Waits, but, uh, but Rage Against the Machine did cover this record, uh, the, Co the Ghost of Tom Joad. The Ghost of Tom Joad. How do you fucking say that? Yeah, that's it, right. The Ghost of Tom Joad. It just sounds really old, but there we go. They did cover it, and it is a cool title, but I mean, it's fucking Bruce Springs, come on. Just listen to the Rage cover, it's way better. Number 52 is Vi Vitology by Pearl Jam, uh, definitely a personal favorite of mine. Uh, I know that Versus is like like the second most fa favorite album by fans or the public in general. And 10 is definitely like the highlight of the band for sure. Uh, so definitely check this one out. Uh, it is a great album by, you know, a great band. Uh, definitely probably my personal favorite, but the objective one, it should be pretty obvious. I mean, come on now. Which will be on this list later. It's you know you cannot uh, not include it at all. I mean, come on now. Fifty-one protection by Massive Attack. I have to load more. 
My internet is really shit, by the way, so I might not even finish this. Or I, I have to kind of rush it now because I only have 12 minutes left and we still have like the other half to do, so there we go. If it wants to load, of course. Number 50, all eyes on me, but Tupac don't really care for this album. Uh, Tupac is a good rapper, but uh, you know, California Love is on there, I fucking hate that song. It's alright, you know, it's an okay song, it's an okay album, and there are a lot of hits on there, so there we go, enjoy it. Number 49 is called the Do Doctor by Sheeter Kinney. Number 48, wow, Pinkerton by Weezer. Um, you know, I'm going like that because Rolling Stone used to fucking hate this album. They're like, oh, this is like the third worst album of, uh, of the 90s or something, or, or of 1996, you know, it's not that bad, but uh, not of the 90s, but the, the third worst album of 1996, and I was like, fuck off Rolling Stone. Uh, ignore the lyrics entirely and all it's a terrible record and now it's on their 90s list like fuck off Rolling Stone it has become probably my personal favorite Weezer album because you know the blue album is kind of overrated and stuff like that and Pinkerton it is overrated too because it has a cult status but uh, Pinkerton is more emotionally and more I, th I think I, I go back to it a bit more so it's definitely a classic album I love the record it's one of my all time favorites so there we go and uh, of course, Rolling Stone, fuck you. Number 47 is Dummy by Portishead. That is what you are, Rolling Stone. Fucking hell. Per perfect title, perfect title. You know, you know, I see why you, you know, why you put this record above uh, Pinkerton so I, could, so I could call you a dummy. Fucking dipshits. Number 46 is Hard Knock Live by Jay-Z Volume 2. I uh, don't really mind this record. I it's probably not even a real record. It's, it's probably just um, just a compilation or something. I do like Jay-Z, he's a good artist, but not a Bob Pinkerton, I mean, come on now. Uh, this is not a Bob Pinkerton, yeah, so I'm just gonna compare everything to Pinkerton now. Uh, Jagged Little Pill by Lance Morset, fucking hater, terrible voice, uh, just terrible songs. Never liked her, she's a very edgy, very, very angsty kind of singer. Uh, you know, how's the fuck song called again, where she's naked in the streets, it's just, uh, thank you. It, thank you, please put on some fucking clothes, bitch. Fucking hell. Uh, number 44 is the score by the Fujis. Uh, the, yeah, Fujis uh, are great, uh, kind of soul, kind of R&B rap act. They are, you know, I was always a big fan of Lauren Hill. She's a very soulful, kind of special rapper to me. Uh, and I believe she only has four records with it, you know, if you include the Unplugged thing that she did. Which some people see as the worst thing ever for some reason, which I don't agree with. But the score is definitely a classic debut, and I believe they're gonna put the miseducation of Lauren Hill in there too, because it was the cover, I believe. Or it was, you know, if you go to, if you search up the name, the title of this list, then <coughs> it will show up on Google, you know, one of the records. Number 43 is Crazy Sexy Cool, but TLC, don't really care for TLC. TLC, they're kind of a slutty band to me, or slutty group. They're kind of the R&B equivalent of uh, the Spice Girls in a way, but they're too less and they're kind of slurtier in a way because they even, they, they have some sex anthems. Well, the Spice Girls have to, all in all, they're just all sluts. They're just all sluts. Uh, 42 is Riddle Me by PJ Harvey. Number 41, uh, Use Your Illusion 1 and 2 by Guns N' Roses. So they're gonna include both of them, they're not gonna choose, they're not gonna put Guns twice on the list, you know, because I think, Oh, we don't want to fill up more guns on this list, so they're just gonna get rid of them and just put both of them on the list. Uh, honestly, I, you know, appetite. It's I can't I cannot deny appetite, but uh, one and two are arguably one of the most filler-ish albums ever. They're not that good as people say they are. There are only like a couple of decent songs on there. And the, actually the hit singles on there I kind of hate too. Uh, you Could Be Mine is a terrible end vocal. As Strange is overblowed and overrated as fuck. November Rain is, all, is killed by the radar and just a bad song overall. Probably the only song I like from all of the, from both the records is Coma. That, that's, that's a good song. Is there anything else from, the, from the, those albums? There are like 30 songs and I can only name one song that I like. Double Talk and Jive, I like too. It's a bit too short, it's, it's better in live performances. I can't really think of anything, really. Locomotive, yeah, Locomotive I like. So. There are some songs I like from, from these two albums, but overall they're really filled with a shitload of filler. 
and get in the ring anyone fucking hell what an atrocious song um, number 40 is Harvest Moon by New Young uh, definitely a good album by him you know Harvest is definitely his better album but it looks like a very interesting cover and if you do want to request some New Young I'm up for that number 39 is Loveless by My Bloody Valentine uh, Alex actually gave it a really low rating on his channel so I definitely want to check it out because it is an acclaimed record but I'll probably despise it too, since he doesn't like it too. I will probably despise it too. So probably. Uh, number 38 is one of my favorites, Super Unknown by Soundgarden. Uh, Soundgarden is arguably the greatest grunge band ever. You know, I love them. Uh, Bad Motor Finger is great too, but of course they're gonna put Super Unknown on there because it's more commercial and stuff like that. I have seven more minutes left, so I kind of have to rush through these. Number 37 is American Recording with Journey Cash. Great record, he still has it in him and you know, he just continued to rock out until uh, 2003 with his hurt cover, which was great too. And if there's a 2000 list, that will definitely be on the list. So there we go. Uh, speaking of her, we will get into some 9 inch nails hopefully. So there we go. If they're gonna leave off 9 inch nails, I'm gonna be fucking pissed at them. Number 36 is The Low End Theory by Trap Called Quest. Definitely a talented hip hop group. I, you know, I do want to get into them, but I'm kind of iffy on hip hop, but you know, maybe. Uh, number 35 is Being There by Wilco. I've heard of this band. If you do want to request them, I'm fine with that. I believe Hotel Yankee Jockstrot or something, I'm Foxtrot or whatever. It's like their Critical Darling or something. I do want to get into the band, so definitely request them because they sound interesting. Number 34 is one of my all time favorite. What's the story? Morning Glory by Oasis. Pretty much the biggest Britpop album ever. Uh, just an amazing album in general. Check it out if you haven't already. I mean, Don't Look Back in Anger is on there. Roll With It by the Photos, you know, that's the song they mention for some reason. Wonderwall, of course. Uh, they, they, only, they only say, or they only name those songs. Uh, don't, yeah, Don't Look Back in Anger. Uh, what else is on there? She's Electric is great. Uh, Shampoo Supernova, spoiler alert. If I, you know, I, I'm probably gonna make a Tottenham Away song, but that is my all-time favorite Away song, Champion Supernova. It's just. Fucking, fucking uh, golden, golden song. Great album by a great band. Fuck you if you think well. If fuck you if you think otherwise. They're a great band. Super champion, Supernova. One of the awesome greats. One of the awesome great bands. Number thirty three is the Slim Shady LP by Eminem. Probably my favorite Eminem LP because uh, I think the Martial Matters LP is a bit too violent for me, and the Eminem show is kind of rehashed. It is a good album, but it's not as good as those other two albums. And the Slim Shady LP just sounds. The most fresh to me was the biggest leap in quality, you know, from Encore to this album. So it's definitely the best in my book. Number 32, I did say put on some fucking Nine Inch Nails on there. And we're probably not going to get the fragile on there, but the downward spiral is on there. Uh, definitely a great album. And I don't know how to think about it. They actually left off Pretty Hate Machine, I believe, in the next review. Or they, yeah, yeah I believe they included it, but, you know, it needed to be higher, I think. Great album. This album needs to be higher too. Closures on there, Hurt. March of the Pigs, Heresy, uh, Miss Piggy, I believe, is also on there. You know, I read something like that. I love them some pigs. Uh, yeah, there are probably more songs on there. You know, I've reviewed the record, but I have to listen to it again. But I'm definitely a big Niners Nils fan. I love Trent Reznor. He's like, uh, I adore that guy. He's just a fucking genius. Come on. Number 31 is Time Out of Mind by Bob Dylan. Uh, number 30 is Dookie by Green Day, uh, classic, classic punk album, uh, some people want to call it pop punk, uh, you know, I, I prefer to say it's punk, uh, the Green is definitely the, the band that, uh, you know, pop punk is just garbage and I think they're good, so there we go, that's what I think, in my opinion. Number 29 is Anthony Wu-Tang, 36 Chamber of Wu-Tang Clan, definitely a classic in the uh, hip-hop genre, definitely want to check it out, but, uh, you know, I might do it soon. Number 28 is Ray of Light on Ray of Ray of Light by Madonna. I don't know whether I said it twice, but maybe that's how fucking stupid she is. It's a good album, but it's not one of my favorites. Uh, speaking of not one of my favorites, you know, the reverse. 27 is Rage Against the Machine by Rage Against the Machine. Great album, you know, uh, all the great songs there. I haven't talked anymore, so I cannot talk about it, but I love the record. Number 26, 26. Number 26 is Illmatic by Ness. Great hip hop album, one of my, one of my favorites in the genre. Number 25 is Sublime is Sublime, good album. 24 is Slender and Agenda by Pavement, I've heard of it, but uh, if you have to check it out. I want to talk about it all so bad, all 23, Simon is Dream of Smashing Pumpkins, I love this record. I cannot talk about it because I haven't talked about it. <laughs> but I love this record, it's one of my all the favorites. Uh, number 22 is Grey by Jeff Buckley, uh, very soul, very melodic album. It's a bit overrated, but I do like it. 
Then 21 is the band, but Radiohead, the Great Album, but I do not think it's 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 above uh, the Pumpkin, but it is definitely, uh, in my opinion, a high in the radio discography, although not everyone will agree with me on that. That album and OK Computer, of course, which will uh, eventually come. Number 20 is Exxon Garfield by Liz Fair, fucking slut, I had this album, and she, yeah, she only has one good album. She is a one album one of which we're also made a video about. Number 19 is Blue, Blue Sugar Sex Magic by Red Hot Chili Peppers, a good album, but I don't, do not think it deserves to be that, this high. Number 18 is Automatic for the People, REM recently reviewed it, I think it's shit. In my opinion, number 70 is, 17 is Reasonable Doubt by Jay-Z. Uh, yeah, good album, probably his best one, uh, or the blueprint for that matter, good albums. Number 16 is Metallica by Metallica. I know that I think about it, they didn't even include one Metallica album in the 80s, but they do include the self-titled one, fucking dipshit. Normies. Uh, number 15 is Car Wheels on a Gravel Road by Luc Lucinda Williams. Number 14 is Doggy Style by Snoop Doggy Dog. This is a disgusting artist, but I do like this album. This is a one album wonder which you're probably gonna include too you know it just all went down after this after uh dr dre left number 13 is ill communication by beastie boys oh they do include nine this record but not uh pause boutique or lies of the hill it's fucking weird number 12 is wildflower with pompeii still a great album though but uh it's just really weird you know that they don't include the high of the beastie boys on their list number 11 is aquamina by outcast good album uh i cannot talk anymore number 10 is crooked rain crooked rain by uh pavement i don't know why they say it twice Number 9 is Old Label Back, a good album. Uh, 8 is Ready to Dog on a Tour's BOG, cl classic uh, hip hop album. Number 7 is In Utero by Nirvana, it's a good album, but it doesn't really need to be this high. Number 6 is 10 by Pearl Jam, uh, one of my all time favorites in grunge. Number 5 is The Miseducation of Lauren, Hi Lauren Hill by Lauren Hill. Uh, yeah, also one of my favorites in hip hop. Number 4 is Achtung Baby by U2, uh, yeah definitely a classic, I do, I do not think it deserves to be number 4 but definitely in the top 10, maybe a bit lower. Number 3 is OK Computer by Radiohead, probably my favorite album of the 90s, you know from alternative rock. Number 2 is The Chronic by Dr. Dre, I like this album but not above OK Computer, it should probably be in the top 20 somewhere. And number 1 is, yeah nevermind by Nirvana, yeah I guess it. Uh, yeah, they're pretty predictable number one. I do not think it's uh, number one, but it's definitely in the top ten. You know, it shaped grunge and uh, whole modern music. It's killed hair metal, so thank you for that, Nirvana. But